Today in the news, Nvidia might castrate another card and Intel gets trolled. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. So, it looks like Nvidia is up to its old slash new tricks again, but this time with the upcoming RTX 3080 Ti. If you guys remember from the 3060 saga from uh, uh, two weeks ago, it was revealed that Nvidia would be limiting Ethereum mining on that GPU. The fact is, it's currently the lowest end card at 330 bucks, so it was maybe kind of understandable that they would limit the appeal of that model to miners just to attempt to get as many cards into the hands of gamers. However, the RTX 3080 Ti is probably going to be somewhere around $1,100 to $1,300. So that's a whole different story. At that price level, the full capabilities of a GPU should be available to the buyer, no exceptions. By the way, if you haven't been staying in the loop, because that's my job after all, the specs of the RTX 3080 Ti goes as follows. 80 SMs for a total of 10,240 CUDA cores, 12 gigabytes of GDDR6, and that memory is clocked at 19 gigabits per second. Very, very close to the RTX 3090. The only thing that's up in the air are the clock speeds, but I doubt that they're going to be any higher than the RTX 3080, since that would push the 3080 Ti too close to the 3090's performance. Now, if we assume that the mining limitations are going to be similar to the ones on the RTX 3060, then the performance hit should be around the 50% mark. Using the RTX 3090's mining numbers and dividing them by half would still mean an Ethereum mining hash rate of 55 mega hashes, so roughly equal to the RTX 2080 Ti. And remember, it would still run at full performance on other crypto algorithms, which means that you can still make like $5 a day for Ethereum and over $7 per day with Conflux. Is that really gonna stop a large-scale mining operation? Say it with me, nah. Also, in NVIDIA news, we finally got wind of another GPU model, the RTX 3050 Ti. Yes, my friends, it looks like NVIDIA's absolutely weird and nonsensical naming scheme of the last gen is gone. No more 1660s, no more 1650s, and thank God no 2600s for this generation. In any case, it was spotted in a laptop config chart from ASUS. The only specs that we got is on the memory, which is four gigabytes of GDDR6. Yep, that's all the specs that we got. Hopefully, on the discrete card for desktops, we'll get a little more memory so that we can mine Ethereum, sorry, I meant game in peace. Next up, we all know how humans love things that are slanted or leaning. You have the Leaning Tower of Pisa, you have the awfully expensive Olympic Stadium in my city, dogs, and even Michael Jackson got some uh, lean for the fans. And it seems like case manufacturer Antec is finally seeing this with its new case called the Dark Cube. It's an ITX case that looks pretty cool in my opinion. You can have the choice between a glass or a mesh front, and personally, I really like the fact that you can pretty much build the entire computer outside of the case and then just slide it inside of the tempered glass sleeve. Unfortunately, it's going to run you up a pretty penny. It's 209 euros. I think that Antec might have been uh, drinking while deciding the pricing of this leaning case. Moving on, we got Intel in the news. Like all companies, the big blue tends to get sued a lot, like at least once a year. And wow, did they lose big this year. They were just hit with a $2.18 billion patent violation verdict for violating two patents held by VLSI technology, which is one of the largest patent fines ever. The Bloomberg article doesn't specify which patent Intel was found to violate, but Intel claims that the two patents haven't been used in 10 years. Now, don't go throwing rocks at Intel because they had no clue that they infringed on that patent. And it's also a good thing that they didn't know, otherwise the penalty could have tripled. Also, VLSI Technologies used to manufacture and design custom and semi-custom chips like 20 years ago, but now it has no products or services of any kind, and it's basically just a patent troll division of NXP semiconductors. VLSI is literally a company that only makes money based on lawsuits, so obviously that's pretty sketchy. Anyways guys, that's pretty much it for the catch up. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you wanna talk about today's stories. You can also click on my shirt to play tic-tac-toe with me or chess, actually chess makes more sense. Uh, as usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty my dudes and I'll see you on the next one.